Wonderful. Um, hi, everyone, and welcome to the orientation session for our 33rd annual conference being held virtually this year from February 22nd to the 26th under the thematic banner of Folk Unlocked. My name is Angus Finnan. My pronouns are he, him, and I'm Folk Alliance International's executive director. I'm joined here today by other staff members who will introduce themselves throughout the training session which we hope will ensure that you are ready to navigate the conference platform and make the most of the event personally and professionally. For anyone attending today's session who is blind or has low visibility, as we make our introductions, we will each provide a visual description of ourselves and the space that we're in. Um, I'll start. I'm a middle-aged white male with dark and gray hair, and I work from home now beard, glasses, and um, a dark brown sweater. I'm in a home office space with a painting and plant in the background. Uh, for any individual on this uh, session who would like to access closed captioning, please click on the CC button at the bottom menu. And uh, finally, before we begin the orientation, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge that we are joined today by folks from various locations using technology that is not necessarily accessible to all. We also recognize the importance and complexity of Indigenous land acknowledgements in the context of online organizing, creation, and collaboration. So along with the rest of our Kansas City-based staff, I would like to acknowledge that our office and our staff are located on the traditional territories and ancestral Indigenous land of the Osage, Kansa, Ka, Kickapoo, and Ocheti Sakawan nations. We invite you to share acknowledgements of the traditional lands that you're joining us from in the chat here today and in all of our interactive online programming in the coming week. If you're not familiar with land acknowledgements or you want to get details in order to participate in this practice, there's a handy link posted in the chat, native-land.ca, and you can find information there. Finally, this session is being recorded and it will be available after if you want to review it again. There's a lot of information uh, and we encourage you to share it with others and highly recommend that folks get oriented to the platform in advance of attending. So today we'll be guiding you through the following items. One, how to set up your conference profile in Pathable. Pathable is the name of the software we're using to make this happen. Two, making a plan, setting goals so that you can get the most out of your time during the conference. Three, connecting and communicating, how to do that with other delegates attending. Four, building business networks. One of the main reasons that uh, anyone comes into uh, a space like this in person or online. And five, how to navigate the music showcases of which there are almost 800 hours. When we're done, we'll wrap up with a live question and answer period uh, using the chat. So be sure to drop your questions in as we go or uh, share them with us at the end. And uh, with that said, I'd like to pass things over to Jared who will take you through the first step. All right, everybody, I'm going to share my screen. So let's just take a moment to get that going. And uh, maybe I can have one of my fellow staff members give me a thumbs up when they actually see it. Hey, look at there, we're rolling. All right, well, I'm gonna start right at the very beginning. And that is how do you get in at all once you've registered? So once you've registered, you'll receive an email and uh, we're hoping that these get sent out with more and more frequency as we get closer to the conference, uh, but we'll continue to send them and remind folks. Uh, this email contains a unique key for you to access your profile. You can see on my screen right here, an example of that email with the large button right in the middle that says sign in to website. And that of course is the Folk Unlocked website. So when you click on that button, it'll take you to a small pop-up screen where this graphic that's right here in the middle that says claim your account, you will see that. You'll confirm your name and your email address and create a password. I recommend writing this down or saving it in your browser. Whatever way you use to save passwords, do so, you're gonna need it as you hopefully are logging in every day to take part in uh, the program. Uh, agree to the terms and conditions, which can be read right there by clicking terms and conditions. And then I recommend clicking on complete profile. Uh, you can click continue to app, it takes you to the homepage, 
But if you click continue profile, it will take you into the page edit profile, which is this page here you see. Uh, you can also find this by going to my profile and edit my profile in the menu. So we're now on the Pathable site, Folk Unlocked. So the important things about your profile, as we scroll down here, you can see the first thing you get to do is edit, uh, update a profile picture. It's really important that this profile picture has your face in it, because as you can see up here above in this cropped circle next to my name, that's how this image will appear. So if it's a big, broad image where you're way far away from the camera, it likely isn't going to interpret as much of anything on the platform. So close-up headshots. You'll also be able to um, edit your email if you need to, and this is also where you can change your password if needed. Uh, it's important to have your first and, name last, first and last name down at the bottom. And then we have over here on the right pronouns uh, with a few examples listed. This is very helpful when, when conversing with folks on the platform. Now over here on the right-hand side is all the information that's gonna be very helpful for people to find you. These are what I would consider the networking column. So at the top is company. And this is an important note. If you're the member of a band, put your band name here so that we can see what band you're a part of. Right underneath that is title. Uh, this is what you do for that company, organization, band, whatever it may be. So you might just be the artist, but let's say you manage the booking. Well, go ahead and put that here, artist, and then comma, booking. That way people know as soon as they look at your profile what you do for that company or what you do for that band. Uh, go ahead and list where you're from. And then primary and secondary roles. This primary role and secondary role is a great way for folks to find entire groups of people. So say you're searching for managers or you're searching Eric, for venues. Can you scroll down real quick so they can see the full screen? Absolutely. Can, can you see primary role now? No, we can only see up to region, state, province. Okay. It might just be taking a second to reload. I'll just go ahead and continue to talk and hopefully it, it reloads this page because I've scrolled down. But there are additional fields like primary role and secondary role, and those um, make it very easy for people to find you by category. Um, you can also edit a description. Uh, something to note is that all the terms in the description, every word that's listed is searchable. Uh, so you drop in keywords, drop in the name of your album that you're marketing, all kinds of things. Um, and then of course you can add keywords directly to your uh, profile, there are suggested keywords and popular keywords listed. Um, uh, can you guys see this yet, or should I go ahead and do a reshare? Re no, it's frozen. It's, okay, yeah. I'll just stop and reshare, no problem at all. Fire this up one more time. All right, hopefully this keys in a little bit better. I've been having some trouble with my Zoom screen shares lately. Um, and at the very bottom of the profile is phone number, which is of course optional and only shared if you allow it to be shared. Uh, so that's it for, um, for the profile. There, there is also a preferences section here where you can change whether or not you want to receive email from messages in the system. So let's talk for a second about messaging people and finding people. Um, is my screen share working? Can you all see the uh, attendee list now? Thanks for the thumbs up, everybody. So this is the attendee list. It's found under people, attendees. And you can see this attendee list is sorted alphabetically by last name. And there's an entire alphabet down the right-hand side, which you can instantly click to. This also three-dot menu next to it here allows you to quickly send someone a message. Might be handy if you need to communicate with someone quickly. Um, you can also send a message by clicking on that person's profile and clicking send message in the top right hand side of their profile. Now see, building out the profile is great because it also shows everything you're attached to or everything you're doing or participating in in the conference. So Betty Sue here, for example, I can see Betty Sue's um, panel, uh, unlock showcase and official showcases all right there. And the last thing I want to talk about on attendee list is the search feature in the top right. As there is thousands of you, sometimes searching is the easiest thing to do. So I'll type Rivers, my last name, and hit go. Sometimes you have to hit it twice. And here we go. So now I can see I'm searching this as if it were a keyword. 
um, which is what it is if you just search broadly in that top. So it will find it anywhere it's listed. So I can see anyone listed with the name Rivers. I can see anyone who might have uh, Rivers in their bio, for example, or maybe it's the name of an album that they're working on. Because I searched it broadly and I didn't define any special search terms, it's going to search it everywhere. But there are lots of drop downs down below where you can narrow in on a more specific search. Um, lastly, the, so that's pretty much searching and messaging. There's a lot to it. Get in there and explore. Uh, lastly, the thing you might want to do before you do anything else is make sure that your Zoom account is up to date. Our platform does use Zoom on the back end for all meetings. And so if you don't have it already, click go to zoom.us slash download. And you can download the newest version of Zoom right here. And if you already have it, be sure to go open your Zoom and under the Zoom menu, click for check for updates. Um, I think that's it for me. Let's go ahead and turn it over to Tressa for making a plan. Hi, everybody. It is me, c'est moi, Tressa Lavasseur. Tressa Lavasseur, my pronouns are she and her, and I am the Outreach Manager at Folk Alliance International. I am grateful and proud to be joining you from the traditional territories of the Haudenosaunee, Anishinaabe, Erie, Huron-Wendat, Adirondack people uh, in Ontario, Hamilton, Ontario. I am a pale-skinned, a middle-aged woman wearing purple glasses and cork earrings that I got in New Orleans last year and um, a woolen scarf. I'm in a room with some pink curtains in my home office. Uh, I usually run the first timers orientation, so I'll just do a little piece from that right now, which is about setting goals for the conference. Um, as Angus mentioned, there's 800 hours of music. There's dozens of hours of live connecting events and programming. And so off the top, it's great to be able to set yourself a couple of solid goals. For example, you would like to make sure that your showcase is very well attended. That's an excellent and concrete goal. Or you would like to learn about how to improve your live streaming setup and audio production. Another excellent goal. So set yourself two or three realistic correct sized goals, and then go through the agenda and find items that adhere to your goals and select those and start to build your agenda for the week around your actual goals. Think about what you're hoping to come out of the event for you. Be as specific as you can, uh, because seeing everything is just not possible. And for example, if you were thinking, okay, I would like my showcase to be very well attended, think to yourself, who are 10 people I absolutely definitely would love to attend my showcase, go and look at their profiles, find out something about them before you message them, and then send them a personal non copy pasted invitation to attend your showcase. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Jennifer Rowe at this point, but I will see you all again in a little bit. Thank you, Tressa. I am going to share my screen real quickly. Okay. Um, hello, my name is Jennifer Rowe. I am the Director of Operations here at Folk Alliance, and my pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm a mom-aged white woman with my brown hair and a little gray hair pulled back into a ponytail. I have black frame glasses, and I'm wearing a dark green sweater my black ground, ground includes some pink paintings and a teal cabinet. Um, I'm gonna talk about how to generally navigate the schedule and to search through the delegate list. Um, to follow up what Tressa said about connecting with people, a great tool is to use the search functions in our attendee list. Jared already talked about that a little bit, um, but what I'm gonna do is click on the attendee button again and talk about uh, looking specifically at roles. So um, Jared showed how you can just type in the last name like Rivers, but if you go down here, you see the primary role. If I know a goal is, for example, to get an agent, um, then maybe I'm gonna type in agent here and identify all the agents that are attending Folk Alliance and then be strategic in how I reach out to them. The other thing is you are welcome 
to reset that and do another search. For example, maybe you wanna connect with people that are in your hometown. So if I live in Nashville, I may wanna type in Nashville and find all the people attending Folk Unlocked from Nashville. Um, so that's another way to use it. But now I'm gonna move over to the agenda. And so the way that I get to this agenda is by clicking on schedule in full agenda. I'm actually in Unlock Showcases right now. Um, but this is the full agenda. I would encourage you to look at the day schedule in its entirety so that you don't miss out on anything. And then once you've done that, start narrowing down what you wanna focus on after you've considered your goals. Um, for example, if you're an artist, you may want to prioritize things that are in the artist track. To do that, you go to the search function again, click on track and find the track that is the most relevant to you. Um, in this case, we talked about artist track. And then I can select, scroll down and select things that I want to attend. You see that there are these blue plus marks. Just click on it until it turns green. And now that's added to my personal agenda. Jennifer, would you mind um, firing up your screen share again? It, it locked yeah. up on us. This you seems to be a theme. A lot. <laughs> Thank you. I think it's important for folks to see what you just did. It's a absolutely piece. happy to do that. Okay, when I'm back up, well, I actually have to hit share. Let me know. Am I operational again? Do y'all see it? Uh, not yet, nope. Jen. Well, we have a couple different options. We can have someone else give this a shot. Um, or we can wait. Suggestions? Jared took a second last time, but yours seems to be taking too long. Seems to be taking longer than a second. Jared, do you mind sharing your screen? I know that's not ideal. Sure. <laughs> but <laughs> we're kind of stuck in this uh, land of things not working exactly how we want it to be. Always. Yeah, this didn't happen in our run through, um, but I was just on the, the main page of our agenda. And so Jared, if you can just go to the full agenda and really you can start clicking on where you see the blue plus marks, you click on it, something that is interesting to you and that you wanna add to your schedule, you just simply click on it. After you've done that, um, there, there are many different threads from panels, meetings, exhibit halls, showcases, and even social gatherings during the conference. Explore all these options before the conference starts on Monday. And after you've made it, many selections, these will now be visible on your unique schedule. So there are a couple different ways to get there. You can either go by looking, clicking on schedule and then seeing my agenda, or on the top left-hand side, you can click the blue button that says view my agenda and that goes directly to all the items that you just added into your agenda. Um, those are the ones that I intentionally wanna go to. Like our in-person conference, we have a lot of opportunities for you to participate throughout the day. Um, so don't forget to take time in your calendar to recharge so that you have energy throughout the week. And now I'm gonna pass this over to my colleague Fawn. And Jared, you may want to keep on sharing the screen unless Vaughn wants to share their screen. Um, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you could go to the home page, uh, we can start there. Um, hi, my name's Fawn. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. I'm the digital media coordinator at Folk Alliance International. Um, I have brown skin and curly hair. That's kind of a mess right now. Uh, I'm wearing a gray turtleneck uh, and Behind me is a white wall with white boards with uh, red text written on it. Um, so I'm going to talk about our peer sessions and affinity groups. So our peer sessions are, uh, if you're familiar, you probably you might be familiar with them from uh, past conferences. They're an opportunity for folks who work in a particular sector of the music field to get together and share experiences, practices, and insights with the goal of fostering community and building vibrant networks. So there's a peer session for venues, for agents, for festivals, um, for all different uh, roles in the uh, 
in the music industry and you meet together in a room, uh, in like a chat room, very much how all the staff is right now. Uh, and you can share your stories and experiences. Um, and for something that is um, not so much industry-based, but is more identity-based, identity uh, we have the affinity groups. And those are community-oriented sessions designed to encourage and foster connections between folks within the FAI community who share a common identity or experience. So those could be people who are uh, over the age of 55 or members of the LGBTQ community or um, uh, our BIPOC community members as well. I know that I'm gonna probably be taking part in our BIPOC and uh, our LGBTQ affinity groups personally. Um, but it's worth noting that these are only live sessions and they will not be recorded at all. These are only live. And so um, now I'm going to show you how to uh, navigate to those. Um, so Jared, if you could go back to our homepage, the, the easiest way to find our, our affinity groups is to just scroll down to the homepage uh, where we have our affinity groups listed. Um, there are all of those there. Click on learn more and it will automatically take you to the list of all of our affinity groups. So you can see here, uh, there are there's our first timers group or LGBTQ Q group, sorry, stumbling over my words. And you can click the, uh, the little plus button to add that to your agenda. Um, and uh, so you make sure you don't miss that. Um, I would highly recommend going to these, by the way, they're amazing and they're fantastic. Please don't let these fall off your radar because once they're gone, they're kind of gone. Um, the other way to find the affinity group is if you're on the, uh, on the huge view, the, uh, the view of the entire schedule, so the full agenda, if you just search affinity in the search bar there, they will pop up. And likewise, if you uh, are looking for the peer sessions, and again, those are our uh, identity oriented, or not in identity, but like industry role oriented uh, groups, just search peer or peer session, and those will pull up. So that's it. Um, yeah, thank you. So it's my turn and I can see Amanda West's question in the chat about panels being recorded and available to see afterwards, or are they all only in real time? Amanda, it's like you read my mind and our agenda. So there are a few different ways in which our programming will be offered. Our panels, many of them have been pre-recorded and they will be available from the moment they are on the schedule to be aired through to the end of the conference and dare I say it beyond that. So any of our pre-recorded content will continue to be available. For example, I see that Jared is scrolling over audio production in person and remote, which is set to air on Monday, February 22nd at 10 a.m. Central Time. By the way, everybody, um, Pathable will update your time for your personal location. So if you're reading it and saying, no, it says 11, that's because you're in Easter. Um, audio production will launch at that time. You'll be able to watch it at that time and have the experience of watching it live, the premiere, if you will, with folks in the chat commenting and often panelists who recorded this also in the chat. So there is a live component. After that, it'll just be available for you to go back to and watch again. So for example, this is a wonderful example. If you wanted to watch diversity, equity, inclusion from concept to concrete action, but you also wanted to attend the affinity group first timers, you would save diversity, equity, inclusion to your agenda to watch later because at the bottom, it doesn't say live only, but over on affinity group first timers, it does say live only. So live only is your clue and you can search live only in the search bar under, I want to say keywords, but I might be wrong. Could also be track. Jared's about to show us. Live only keywords. There it is. Um, there are a number of live only sessions. Um, I'm really personally looking forward to the highlight live session for me, which will be the keynote interview with Dr. Bettina Love on Thursday, the 25th. Um, and that is about the size of that. Uh, many, uh, there are sessions that are part live and part breakout sessions, only the group parts of those will be recorded. So if you do see live only anywhere, don't count on seeing it afterwards. I'm going to pass it over to my colleague, Marissa. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Marissa Kolka. 
and I am the communications manager here at Folk Alliance. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and I am a young black woman with short, dark brown curly hair with things wearing a gray turtleneck. Um, I'm in my home office in which you can see a couple plants and the exercise bike behind me. Um, okay, let's get my screen shared. Okay, can everyone see my screen? Good, okay, great. All right, so first, um, so I'm gonna show you a few um, communications pieces. I'm sorry, I have my screen open on the other um, depth monitor, so <laughs> not looking directly at everybody. Um, so over on the conversations tab, we have quite a few things over here. So first, um, let's take a look at the public forums. Uh, now the forums function exactly as most forums do. Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with them on uh, various parts of the internet. Um, but basically you have um, a bunch of different conversations happening. Um, this actually shows all of the conversations that are happening throughout the platform. So um, here, for instance, we can see a conversation happening um, in this Connecting Artists Mentorship Meetups. Um, and there are various other conversations that are happening just right here in the forums, um, but they are very easy to interact with. Let's see, I'm just gonna click on this one right here. Um, you can go and you can reply to the conversation. You can like it. Um, you can see when the last post was, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then also this year we have, so I'm gonna show you how to get to it um, from the top. We have under conversations again, you can click on in memoriam. And so we have created this space um, basically just to honor the full community members that we've lost this past year. Uh, so Angus, our executive director, he started um, a conversation right here um, where folks can post um, memories, tri tributes, remarks, um, things like that. And then also on Friday at noon, we will have a live remembrance room um, in a video meeting environment. Um, so again, if you want to get to this, you can go to conversations in memoriam, and then it also is pinned to the top on the main public um, forums page right here. Um, and then also under conversations, this is where your inbox is. So um, any messages that you've received, you can go right here. Um, so to start a conversation, you can go to new conversation and you can actually just search the person you're looking for. So I will message Tressa. And I know that it's the right Tressa because it says Folk Alliance International, although I don't know how many Tressas we have at the conference. <laughs> uh, so you can just send a message right here and click send. Um, and then another way to message people is you can go to people at the top and then attendees and um, let's see, Saul Paul, you can click on his name and send message right here. And then as soon as you send those messages, again, you can go back to conversations and you'll see all of the messages that you have out. Um, so highly encourage people to take advantage of that. Um, this, con this conference is all about connection and community. So, um, we definitely encourage people to use these features. Um, so the other item that I wanted to talk about um, as communications manager, of course I have to mention uh, that we have emails that go out daily. Um, so Jared, if you could drop that in the chat, the link to our email sign up. Um, so one way to sign up for emails is you can go to folk.org under our virtual conference page. Um, and there is a link right here to make sure you receive any updates. Um, you can click on this and that will open up our email uh, sign up. So you can just fill out this form. Um, this is for our conference updates, but if you also want to receive updates about other things that Folk Alliance International is doing year round, you can check this um, general FAI updates or the Folk Radio charts, for instance, and you will also get news about that. Um, but our conference news uh, email list is super important. We are gonna be sending out daily emails with uh, just sort of an overview of the agenda of each day. Um, we are sending out, we've already sent out like two emails this week. We have a couple more coming out. So that's really the best way to um, stay up to date on what we're doing. Um, in addition to following us on social media, um, we're of course pretty active on both Facebook and Instagram. So if you do not follow us there, um, please, do please do so. Our Instagram is at folk underscore alliance and our Facebook is just um, facebook.com slash folk alliance. Um, so I would definitely recommend you heading over there. Um, another thing that I want to show you in Paffable 
um, is the help desk, which um, is going to be very important. So over here um, in the menu, there's a help desk. So the first thing we have technical support. Uh, so if you click on that, actually I can't see it. I have my Zoom screen over it. Okay. Um, so right here you have this little chat box. This is how you can contact Pathable. Pathable is the virtual conference platform that we're on right now. Um, so if you have any technical questions about Pathable, you can contact their support um, via chat or email. This is not how you contact full clients. So you will not get a hold of any staff members by going through this route. Um, we also have this FAQ page. Um, so this has a lot of the most commonly uh, asked questions that we've had. So um, I'm sure a lot of your questions may already be answered on this page. Um, for instance, if you have questions about accessing the event um, on mobile devices, um, how to send private messages, if you forget how to do that, how to reset your password is a really important one. All of those things are here. And we'll continue to add questions if um, more things come up over the next week that we feel like uh, should be on this page. So um, definitely check for that before um, you reach out to anybody. Um, and then we also have the help forum which uh, functions just the same way as our regular conversation forum, but this is all for specific um, help questions. So uh, for instance, someone here has already asked how long will the panel sessions be available? And Jared went ahead and answered that. So you can come here and see, oh, maybe someone's already asked my question, it's been answered. Um, if it hasn't, you can just start a new conversation right here. Um, we will have volunteers managing this forum all throughout the conference. Um, so if you do have to post a question here, then, um, it should be answered pretty quickly. Uh, and then the, oh, uh, also we have a support at folk.org email that you can also um, email during the conference. Jennifer, you're making so many faces. <laughs> this is incredibly distracting. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm saying something wrong. <laughs> Um, and then the final thing I want to show you on this help tab is uh, the accessibility page that has um, a list of all of the sessions that we will have ASL interpretation available on. Um, it just mentions our closed captioning. Um, and then also, if you need any additional assistance, um, if you have any specific needs, we have a form that you can fill out um, and hopefully we can accommodate uh, anything that you may need, may need some assistance with. Um, and finally, yeah, I just want to um, remind everyone that, again, this is a conference, this is Folk Alliance, it's all about community connections, especially when we're online, we want people to reach out to each other, um, we want to, everyone to feel connected, but also please be mindful of the communications that you're sending out. Um, we want you to, if you're going to be emailing people, like in your own email platform, please make sure you're sending individual, clear, targeted messages on a specific topic that are not, as Tressa said, copy and pasted messages. Um, please don't send mass emails to a long list of people. Um, we, we really want to make sure that people aren't being spammed during the conference. There's a ton of communications going on right now. Um, and that applies the same to the inboxes. If you're reaching out to people in there, just please make sure you're sending individual um, customized messages to each people, each person that you're talking to. Um, we don't want anyone to feel like they're just getting sent spam messages. No one wants to reply to those. They're just not as effective anyway. So um, definitely make sure that you are being mindful of your communications during the conference. Um, and that is all that I have. I'm going to pass it on to um, Alex, who uh, is going to talk about building business networks. Uh, hi, everyone. Just getting to my screen share real quick. All right. Can everyone see my screen? Can you shake your heads real quick? Great. Um, and please use the mic and tell me if it, if it freezes right away, because um, I'm trying to monitor the chat, but I'm not doing a great job. OK, um, so my name is Alex Mallet. Uh, my pronouns are he and him, and I am Folk Alliance International's Director of Development. I'm a dad aged white male with big curly hair, wearing a dark flannel shirt and a bright green sweater. Um, I have an upright base behind me in a home office. So uh, Folk Alliance is an incredible hub for business to business activity. Um, the first thing that I'm going to show you is the exhibit hall and how that will work at the conference this year. Uh, we have more than 50 companies exhibiting um, and I really encourage all of our delegates to check them out and get to know them. So 
here in my screen, you can see that uh, I'm inside, uh, I've gone to the agenda, the schedule, I've gone to full agenda, and I've actually searched for exhibit, which is a quick way to find the exhibit hall hours. Now, uh, the booths are always live. Um, you can always see all of the exhibitors, but only during the hours in the schedule, um, you can go into the booth itself and visit the exhibitors in a Zoom meeting room. When you click on, on that link, it looks like this. This is an alphabetical listing of all of our exhibitors. Um, they're fully searchable. Uh, just as Jared mentioned, you can search by anything that's in their description, or you could use uh, keywords that they've entered themselves. For instance, acoustic guitar, and here's any booths that associate themselves with acoustic guitar. Um, so I really, really recommend um, using those features to kind of hone in on, on folks that you'd like to meet. When you click on a booth, it goes to this screen. Um, and this is where the exhibitor has filled out all of the information about uh, their company. So uh, the exhibitors have done a great job with this. They're really full descriptions. Uh, many of them have videos to check out, um, you know, showcases of their artists or their products, their external links. Um, these are the contacts associated with the booth. So you could reach out to them directly using the tools that we showed you earlier. Um, when it's not during booth hours, you can leave your card and just write a message. Um, and the exhibitor will be notified um, that you dropped by and that you have some interest in what they're doing. Um, so that's a great feature. And then during the exhibit hall hours, this button that says enter virtual trade show booth, you'll use that and that will go into a, a Zoom window where you can talk to the exhibitor one-on-one. -on -one. Um, you can also, uh, going uh, back to the exhibitors tab, you can also reach the exhibitors here um, you can um, also uh, save the exhibitors as a whole um, as something in the agenda that you'd like to check out. Um, so that's going to be a great place for business to business meetings within the conference. Uh, the next thing that I want to show you in the schedule are uh, what we've called Bramble Socials. Um, so I'm looking for lobby social. Uh, in this schedule item, there, these are all uh, twice a day. Um, and in the schedule item, um, there will be a link that will take you to this site. Now, I wanna just line this up really quickly. Bramble is a lot of fun, I think. Um, and one of the things that we were looking for when we planned this conference was ways to sort of recreate some of the vibe and spirit of Folk Alliance. Um, and we called this the lobby social because one of the things that people love about Folk Alliance is the ability to sort of run into their friends and make sort of uh, um, uh, just spontaneous connections. So when you open Bramble, it looks like this. And you'll see here that I have a little avatar that says Al Mao. And I'm moving around a virtual world uh, this does not require a sign-in. Um, it doesn't require an account. And you can see the other avatars or the other staff. When they come closer to me, they come into focus and they can hear me. Um, and when they go further away, I lose them and they can't hear me anymore. Um, there are other features around this. You can uh, select multiple attendees and join a group. You can go to find people. I can locate my friends. Um, and then you can also create a profile by clicking on your avatar um, and mess with the different features. You can change what your avatar looks like. You can introduce yourself, add your social feeds, et cetera. Um, so this is produced by Artery, which is a global community for intimate culture and social infrastructure. Um, they've created this platform um, and we're really excited to, to um, partner with them. Uh, this is a place where I encourage everyone to kind of come and network and also consider it uh, playtime. It's, it, it's really fun. Um, the third thing that I want to show everyone. Um, okay, so that's Bramble. Bye everyone in Bramble window.
Um, uh, so, uh, this year at Folk Alliance, we have spotlight showcases. These are the premier showcases at the event. Um, they're pre recorded live performances that will be premiered at the showcase time with real chat, uh, with the chat box in real time. They're happening between 3.30 3 and 6.30 p.m. Central Time. Um, again, the calendar does adapt to your time zone. Um, and they'll be visible within the platform on replay until February 26th. So there are two ways to navigate these that I'd like to share. The first one is by going to the People tab. If you click on Spotlight Showcase Artists, it takes you to this page where all of the artists are listed. And then when you click on view showcase, it will actually go to the time of the showcase and you can add it to the agenda. You can also read about the showcase. Many of these uh, were recorded on site, um, especially ones like the Louisiana showcase. They, they filmed artists all over Louisiana. So a part of this is kind of getting the context of the performances. Um, they're, all of them are really, really cool. Um, and you can see here in the description, we've actually given our attendees a timestamp for all of the performances. So if you want to get really detailed about your schedule, you can add it to your agenda and then just make a note that um, the artist you want to see is at a particular time. Um, you can also uh, view the showcases from uh, the schedule. So there you can either see it in full agenda or in spotlight showcases. The great thing about this view is you can see all of them and who's presenting sort of the theme of each showcase. So if you're really interested in Australian artists, you just click the plus um, and you have it in your schedule to check out all of the showcases that they're presenting. The, the names and photos that you see here, these are actually associated with the contacts that are performing the showcase. So as you're networking in the, in the uh, people features we showed you, you can also add their showcases that way. Um, and I'll show you one example of that here. Um, so this is, uh, I'll, go to Betty Sue. Um, she's a great example because her, her profile is filled out. So this shows you how important what we talked about earlier is just having your profile set up. But then you can see here to the right, that's the panel that she's speaking on. This is one of her unlocked showcases and this is her spotlight showcase. So you can actually uh, favorite each one of these. Um, one other thing that I want to note is that Friday during the spotlight showcase times, there's the Global Music Marathon closing party. Um, that is going to be a really awesome event. It's the uh, capstone event of Global Music Match, which was a, 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 a global initiative between uh, 14 countries and uh, 96 artists from all those countries. This will be like a spotlight showcase. Um, but it will be more interactive uh, and all viewable both within Pathable and within Bramble. So uh, mark your calendars with that because that's going to be a lot of fun. Um, now I'm going to pass it to Jennifer um, to talk Alex, about how, yeah. Do you mind keeping your screen up since I was having issues with my screen? Of course. Um, yeah, can you go to the unlock showcases for me? Yes, here we go. So I am going to talk about Unlock Showcases. I am personally really excited about the Unlock Showcases. Um, these are essentially equivalent to the private showcases for in-person conference um, that are hosted in hotel guest rooms. We have a combination of artists who are performing in individual listings and those who are part of a presented room. We have 105 presented rooms during the four nights with over 800 artist performances within those 105 rooms and another 400 plus individual artist performances. That means that there are nearly 1300 performances in the unlock showcases. It may be impossible to see everyone, but I encourage you to pop in and out of showcases just like you would at the hotel. 
Many of these performances will be live stream, but after the live stream, an artist can select to save it and make the performance available as on demand throughout the duration of the conference. Someone asked in the chat how long these will be up. The plan is to have them up through the whole duration, which is through the Friday the 26th. Um, there will be some performances that are live only, and we hope to have those marked as such. Um, I would suggest, so Alex, if you want to just scroll down so people can see how they're listed. It is great. You can, if it's Monday and it's 6.30 p.m., you can simply scroll and see who's performing right now and add them to your um, agenda. And it's just like if you're walking down the hallway, wandering the hall and just randomly finding someone. But I also highly suggest you use the search feature to find your favorite artist. So Alex, type in an artist um, that you know, or I can give you a name. There we go, Rachel. And that's a way to see when she's performing. I decided that maybe Tuesday is the best night for me to see her. So I can add that to my agenda pretty easily right there. Another really great way to discover a new artist is by using the keyword. So Alex, if you hit reset on the search thing below, go ahead and go to keywords and maybe select blues or whatever you wanna select as one of the genres. Bluegrass, perfect. Um, that means that we don't have any, no, we do. Okay, so there's some artists there. We're still in the process of, of having our artists provide that information to us. Um, but over the next few days, hopefully these will be populated more and more. So that's a great way to search for based on, on what type of genre that you'd like. Um, again, as I mentioned before, we have 105 different presented rooms. Alex, if you would go ahead and search for um, reset the search and click in the unlock showcase track and click on presented rooms or presenter rooms. This is a way for you to see those 105 presented rooms. Um, this is one area you can click in, like go ahead and click in Heartland Song Network as an example. Um, you can see them, see all the artists below. And uh, you can either just check mark or put in the blue box for the, the whole thing that you want to, or you can individually decide the artists that you want to see in that space. And the other thing to note that even though they're in this, if you were to go back into the main schedule with the unlock showcase schedule, the artists are both in here in the presented room and in that main schedule. Um, so that's the general information on how to navigate the unlock showcases. Um, we just encourage you to do like you do in the in-person and discover as much new music as possible. You can end this screen sharing Alex right now, and I think we're done. Um, that's a basic overview of our virtual conference. We thank you for joining us. We're gonna take some time to answer questions. Jared, yeah. are there some questions? <clears throat> there are, and actually I wanted to say one more thing about the unlocked showcases before we move on. Uh, one thing that no one can see yet because of uh, the event is next week is you don't see any videos yet, but you will when you show up at the appropriate time, uh, the video will display right at the top of all of these pages that we've been favoriting as we go through. So don't worry, you will be able to see them. You actually, and, and see that Irene asked a question. Um, so if you are logged into Folk Unlocked with, as an attendee, most of these, you will be able to see the video at the top of the screen. It will just say that it will not be live until the, the start time of the performance. So that is a great way to check to whether or not your video is there. If it's not there, um, then you need to provide me that information. Don't worry, artist. We will be tracking you down to make sure that we have the appropriate HTTP link to put in that space. We don't want to leave you without a showcase running. So that's what we're going to be doing over the next couple of days is really making sure that we have all the data that we need from you. Um, but please be patient with us because it is a lot of data to be entering into the system. Yes, thank you for answering Irene's question. And Jennifer, would you like to take Andy's as well since it's also about the Folk Unlocked? Uh, I can read that out loud for those yeah. that can't see. Andy asked, will there be links to our showcases within the Folk Unlocked platform that we can send to other attendees? Absolutely. And the easiest way to do that is if you type in your name, um, you see it on there, just right click and do copy link address or at the top of the browser, it should say pathable and there'll be all, a whole bunch of letters. That's your unique 
um, link to your event, I would suggest just trying it out and making sure that it you copy the right address by clicking in or putting it in a new browser window. Wonderful. We have another question from Ian Davies. How long will showcase content be available after February 26th? Um, would someone like to jump in and talk about both the spotlight and unlocked showcase content? At this point, we are not planning on having content available for showcases after the 26th in both the unlocked or the spotlight showcases. But as was mentioned before, the panels will be available, um, those that are not only live, will be available for up to a year. Wonderful, just going down the list here. Um, an anonymous attendee says, during conference sessions, will Zoom setup be the same as it is here with chat, QA, subtitles, et cetera? Are live events chat only or should we make sure to have our mic ready? Um, I can actually answer that. For our panels, these are pre-recorded content, so it's just chat only as far as the engagement in real time. But we do have some Zoom meetings, uh, a little bit different than webinar. Uh, you basically have audio, video, and chat. So there's no Q&A, but you would, would have the other three in anything that is a, what we're calling workshops or meetings like a peer sessions and affinity groups. Uh, would anyone else like to add anything to that? Great. Uh, Patty asks, how are you, whoop, just jumped on me. How are you linked to events you've clicked on? Anybody want to take that? So I, I think, Patty, what you may have been talking about, um, when you look at your agenda, um, or there are two different things. My agenda is things that I'm linked to because I'm a panelist on there or a speaker or an artist in an event. And there are things that I've, I've intentionally checkmarked. And then we have your attendee profile. So if I were to look at my attendee profile, it shows all the things that I'm linked to. Again, the linking are those events. So if you are an artist and you're connected to an unlock showcase or a spotlight showcase, it, it would show that in there. I know we looked at Betty Sue as an example. It showed all that she's a panelist, she's an artist, and she's on a spotlight showcase. So that's, that's where those linkings happen. And we make those connections by the data that was provided to us by artists. And then um, we, we made those connections for the panels. Thank you so much. Our next question from Michael. Marissa wants to answer this one live. What link do we use to promote our showcases to the public? Marissa, take it away. All right, I'm just gonna share my screen real quick. Can you all see Hackable? Great. Um, so two part answer to this question. Um, first, uh, I will show you how to navigate to that in um, Pathable. So actually, I already looked this up, but if you go to people and attendees, I'm going to type in your name, Michael. I'm going to try it again. <laughs> and then I click here and I found your showcase. So you can click on that. And then you can actually just link directly to your showcase up here. Um, in the browser, that link you can send to anyone and they'll be able to open this page directly. Um, but another thing that I wanted to show you is we have a page of assets for promoting um, both the conference in general and for showcase artists. I believe um, both Alex and Jen have sent out this page to our spotlight and our unlock showcase artists. Um, if Jared or someone, I, can't, I don't see the chat, but if someone could drop this in the chat again. Um, but this page has um, all of our art, our general artwork that you can share on Facebook and Instagram or wherever. We have our little logo here. And then also we've created these um, specific graphics for artists to share. They just say, check out my showcase at Folk Unlocked. Um, and it talks about um, the Village Fund and where the proceeds for those public, um, public access donations will go to. Um, so yeah, we have assets for you to promote those um, to your fans and your friends. And then also there's a way for you to link directly to your showcase in Pathable. So I hope that answers your question, Michael. And then also um, I saw someone had already asked in here, it didn't go into the Q&A, but um, this webinar is recorded and it will be available on our YouTube channel um, either today or tomorrow whenever we're able to get it up. Um, but just want to let everyone know that this will be available afterwards if you miss anything or want to check it out again. 
Great. Thank you very much, Marissa. Um, I'll, there's a next one here that's just another anonymous attendee asking, is there any kind of space for jamming with others? Um, I know the first thing that came to my mind is there are unlocked showcases that are being hosted where there is going to be some jamming over Zoom. Uh, I would say search the keyword jam, um, very simple way, or jamming. Um, this is exactly what this profile or um, platform is all about. If you want to discover something new, type in the keyword and see what comes up and just explore. Um, are there any other questions? Uh, Alex, are you answering Jeff's question here? You want to take yeah. that? I'm going to answer it in the chat because. OK. Yeah. Um, very good. Well, I'll let that go. Um, there are no other questions in the Q&A. Everything is answered. Um, the chat keeps disappearing on me, <laughs> but I think we got that posted. Uh, Jennifer, have we mentioned at all um, public tickets and are we going to in this? Uh, well, Marissa kind of a little bit did just a second ago for right. artists to promote public tickets. So okay. uh, I don't know if we need to do more than that, but if you are an artist and um, you want your fans to attend the, the showcases, since they certainly don't need to attend the industry panels, um, please, please, please promote the unlock showcases and the public side. An email was sent by me yesterday, I think, uh, that had all that information. And again, I think someone put in the chat the um, link to the assets page um, and the village fund. So that is a fundraiser, as Marissa just said, for the village fund. Um, and those are small grants that are going directly to artists and industry within our community. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Jen. I'm going to just give a moment for anybody else on staff who would like to unlock, uh, unlock their microphone and jump in with anything, uh, any final thoughts? It looks like everyone is gonna stay muted on me. Angus, go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll just jump in to thank everyone for uh, joining us today, but also there are, I think about 80 something at one point, um, there are well over 2000 delegates already registered. We anticipate a lot more coming in at the last minute. Um, if you found this video or this presentation um, helpful, we strongly encourage all of your peers and friends that you know are coming to view this in advance and to explore this platform so that they don't end up um, showing up on Monday frustrated by something that they're not uh, aware of. So the entire design of this is to sort of be an orientation to get acclimatized to um, how to navigate uh, the system, how to set your agenda, and how to have a, a plan for a, um, an enjoyable and rewarding week with us. Wonderful, and there we did it. We are at the 59 minute mark. We are done within exactly one hour. We are an efficient machine, if nothing else. Thank you very much for joining and we'll see you all at the conference.